Welcome to the Woman Warriors Podcast, where we're working to help you call a truce with your anxiety. The information in this podcast is not a substitute for seeking help from a licensed mental health professional. Now, here's your host, Elizabeth Cush, LCPC. Welcome back to the Women Warriors Podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth Cush, and I'm a licensed clinical professional counselor in Annapolis, Maryland. And right now I am seeing clients all virtually. I do miss my office, which is where I'm recording this. I miss coming here. I miss seeing my clients face to face. I miss those clients who want to have a hug occasionally and being able to touch them. But I know that the safest thing right now is to meet virtually, and I will continue to do that. So if you live in Maryland and are more curious about wanting to work with me, you can find more about me at progressioncounseling.com. You can also find the podcast at progressioncounseling.com forward slash woman warriors. There's a newsletter there that you can sign up for so you don't miss a single episode or a blog from me. So you can find that form at womanwarriors.com, either a pop-up or scroll down to the bottom of the page and you'll find a place to sign up. So today we're talking about self-care, why it matters, maybe why we don't take care of ourselves, and some simple ways to bring more self-care into your life And I know there are so many posts and articles and blogs about what you can do for self-care, but I hope you'll stick with me for this episode as we explore self-care a little bit further. In episode 120 and 121 with Dr. Nalaja Green and Sharon Martin, we explored how not expressing our needs, whether it's because we've learned this through family of origin dynamics and and messages or through historical, cultural, societal norms, or what's been put upon us from society and our culture and our history that we're, we struggle with knowing what we need and we explore how that can impact our mental health maybe causing us to feel depressed or anxious. So this week, we're going to dive a little deeper into self-care and how self-care can help you better identify your needs, set boundaries, and take care of yourself. And I'll provide a little exercise on just how to do that. I think it's amazing that for all of us, almost all the time, when we're asked how we're doing, we say, fine, I'm fine, I'm good, things are great. When maybe they're not, when maybe there are things we would like to share and be more vulnerable to share about, or maybe we're not even recognizing that things aren't okay. Maybe we're so used to holding it in and figuring things out on our own that we don't reach out for help. Because part of reaching out for help means asking someone to help you. And that can be really, really hard. But it also means you need to know what it is that you need in those moments to ask for help. And if you don't know what you need, or you don't know how you're feeling, if you have learn to to disconnect from your feelings, it's really, really hard to know what it is you do need. I know I grew up in a family where feelings really were not discussed. We weren't, I wasn't taught how to process big feelings. My parents, not that they were dispassionate, but there weren't a lot of emotions. It was really just about getting through the day You know, maybe there was humor, but there really wasn't a lot of 
talk about when things weren't good. And big emotions, we were kind of expected to figure out how to handle those on our own. And for a kid, that's really hard. That is really hard. So I learned early on to disconnect from my feelings, to not feel, to find ways to disconnect from my feelings. So I had a lot of anxiety because the feelings are there and now they were showing up through it anxiety and anxious symptoms versus the feelings themselves. But I also learned how to not take up a whole lot of space. I learned to be quiet. I learned to not, I didn't learn how to take care of my needs because I wasn't being shown that. There was not a lot of modeling of that in my family. There was more resentment about having to meet everybody else's needs versus how do I take care of my own and meet the needs of the other people in the family. So I learned to put the feelings aside. I learned to not prioritize my needs. Um, And some of the putting my feelings aside, I managed that as I moved into teenagerhood through using drugs, alcohol, ways to shut the feelings down because they were too intolerable to be with. I know I've also shared here that I had an abusive relationship in college and that further emphasized for me that my needs did not matter, that my needs could not matter because if I spoke up too much or advocated too hard for my needs that uh, it would cause conflict. I'd get punished, not through physical ways, but emotionally, you know, being um, ignored or the silent treatment, or argued with. And those that left a deep impression for a long time, for a long, long time, where I kept myself quiet and really didn't understand what it was I needed to do to take care of me. So when we grow up, And either our caregivers or our partners or our friends reinforce for us that it's better to accommodate others to take care of other people's needs, that it's important for our safety to take care of other people's needs. We shut them down. We stop listening. We stop listening to ourselves. We lose touch with who we are. We lose touch with our intuition. We stop trusting ourselves to know what we need. And so to build back the trust, to learn more about us, about you, about yourself, takes practice, it takes time, it takes patience and kindness. It takes setting boundaries, it takes saying no. But someone shared with this with me, and I wish I could remember who it was. But they said, setting boundaries, when you're saying no to someone else, you're often saying yes to yourself. And that has stuck with me. In that abusive relationship in college, it took me a long time to work my way out of it to disconnect from that person and to start building the self-trust and self-love within myself. And part of that process was therapy. Part of that process was setting boundaries, even though it caused conflict. And the other part of that was building friendships with people who loved and cared about me and who also had healthy boundaries. And later in my life, having kids made it easy to put others' needs first and to put my needs on the back burner because children, family, relationships, marriage takes a lot of energy. And in my head, that energy meant that I should be taking care of everyone else and not myself because that was selfish or needy. 
or whatever word you want to use. And so it took me a long time within my new family to find ways to get my needs, to advocate for my needs, even within the family unit and not feel guilty, not feel shame around having needs. So just know our family patterns, our relationship patterns show up in in all relationships. And if we've been taught, if we've been um, molded to take care of others' needs first, or that maybe our needs should are shameful, or we should feel guilty about having needs. It takes time and patience and compassion and curiosity to build in yourself a relationship with you. And that takes taking care of you and what you need. But to do that, you have to know what you need. You have to understand how you're feeling in the moment in order to take care of your own needs. So how do we do that? How do we get back in touch with us? Because as a child, you knew what you needed. Kids know when they're hungry, when they have to go to the bathroom, when they need their diaper changed. They get it through crying, through complaining, through asking, through nagging. But when we learn to keep that quiet, when we learn that that's not acceptable and it gets shut down, it means we have to teach ourselves. We have to reparent ourselves to learn who we are and how to take care of ourselves. So that can be through therapy or coaching, or working with a nutritionist. And I've found that personal reflection has been a huge part of my journey, which I've shared here, that meditation, that sitting with me has helped me get to know myself, know my feelings, trust that I can ask for what I need and be heard. And part of that is I know I need exercise. So being able to set a boundary on when my exercise happens, eating healthy, not drinking too much, not doing drugs, and making time to spend with friends and family, really important for me. So what are some of the ways that we can take care of ourselves? One of the small um, things I like to recommend for clients is to find moments throughout your day to check in with yourself and to make this a habit whether you set an alarm on your phone or you just have times of day that are easy to pause and reflect. And ask yourself, what do I need right now? And so maybe in the morning after you had your cup of coffee, you need to go to the bathroom. Or maybe if you ask yourself midday, you realize you haven't had lunch. And so it's time to have something to eat. And maybe if you ask yourself towards the end of the day, when the evening is slowing down and you're tired, that it's time to stop working. That it's time to allow yourself to rest. But the key is, whatever it is in that moment, asking yourself, what do I need right now? that you listen, that you trust, that you know what you need. So even saying to yourself, in this moment, my intention is to trust myself, that I know what I need. Because that might take some time for you to listen and hear and trust that yes, those needs matter and that they're important. So trusting that you know what you need, 
listening when you speak up for yourself and answer yourself in those moments, and then to the best of your ability, meeting those needs. So yes, you may say on a very busy day, what I need right now is a vacation, but maybe you can't do that. Maybe you can't give yourself a vacation in that moment or a trip to the spa or whatever it is. Maybe that can't happen in that moment, but you can acknowledge I'm exhausted. I'm tired of working. If I could, I would take a vacation right now. So by acknowledging, you're listening to yourself and acknowledging that right now things are really hard. And maybe you offer yourself some words of comfort. This is really hard right now. That even though I want to take a vacation, I can't. Or even though I'd like to quit my job, I can't. Right now. And that's really hard. And the beautiful thing is, as we build a caring, kind, compassionate, curious relationship with us, with ourselves, with our feelings, with who we are, we reflect that back in our relationship with others. And it makes those relationships healthier, or maybe it helps us recognize that we're stuck in unhealthy relationships. So remember that self-care is about tuning into yourself and that the self-care needs can be as small as I need a drink of water right now or I just need to rest. I need to pause right here, right now. I need to take a deep breath. Well, I hope that you will take a few moments this week couple times a day and ask yourself, what do I need right now? And take a moment to stop and listen. Have a wonderful week. Ciao for now from this woman warrior. In episode 120 and 121 with Dr. Nalaja Green and Sharon Martin, we explored how not expressing our needs, whether it's because we've learned this through family of origin dynamics and and messages or through historical, cultural, societal norms, or what's been put upon us from society and our culture and our history that we're, we struggle with knowing what we need and we explore how that can impact our mental health, maybe causing us to feel depressed or anxious. So this week, we're going to dive a little deeper into self-care and how Self-care can help you better identify your needs, set boundaries, and take care of yourself. And I'll provide a little exercise on just how to do that. Thanks for listening and subscribing to the Woman Warriors podcast. Music was written and performed by Andy Cush. If you'd like more information on this episode, you can find the show notes, the resources shared today, and links to the guests' profiles at womanwarriors.com. Thank you.